Good evening, everybody. It's Sunday, October 18th, and today was just a stunningly gorgeous mid-fall day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today, I want to talk all about fig rust. What is it? Should you be concerned about it? And if you should be, what you can do about it? So first, I'm going to start off with my container fig trees that you see growing right here. And then we will move on to our in-ground fig trees, which you can see over here. So what is fig rust exactly? Fig rust is a fungal disease that will attach itself onto the leaves of fig trees. Here you can see what fig rust looks like, and you can tell why it's called rust. That fig looks like a rusty piece of iron. So what happens is the fig rust will attach itself onto this leaf, and then eventually, as the case of rust progresses, the leaf will start to turn yellow, and then it will eventually drop off, just like that. And whether or not you should be concerned about this has everything to do with the time of year that you get rust and how long your growing season is. Most of my container fig trees are becoming overwhelmed with fig rust right now. But it is October 18th, and my average first frost of the year is about November 10th. So in another three to four weeks, all of my fig trees are going to get hit by frost. They are going to lose all of their leaves, and any fruits that remain are not going to ripen. And since temperatures are cooling down so much at this time of year, it's been difficult to ripen figs anyway. So when you get rust this late in the game, there is absolutely nothing that you should be concerned about. And that is because figs are naturally deciduous trees. They lose their leaves in the fall this time of year anyway. If you're approaching 30 days or 45 days or maybe even 60 days from frost and your temperatures are dropping and you're having trouble ripening figs, if you get hit by a case of rust and you start losing all your leaves, it's not a big deal at all. In fact, we welcome rust at this part of the year because we want our fig trees to naturally drop their leaves anyway, just like any deciduous tree. We want them to go dormant for the fall and the dormancy helps put the fig trees to sleep so they can better survive cold temperatures in the winter. So having rust come in in the, uh, the middle part of fall before things get too cold and risk damaging your fig trees, it's actually not a bad thing. It's nature working in perfect harmony when it happens along the appropriate timeline. So long story short, if your cases of fig rust coincide with the natural change of seasons, the shortening of the days, the colder nights, possible frost. It is not a problem at all. You should not be concerned and you don't have to do anything about it. Now let's talk about the other case. When you get fig rust in the middle of summer when you still have plenty of growing season left and you've barely started or maybe not even started to ripen any figs yet. Here you'll see my Laterula Italian honey fig and there are basically no leaves left on this tree. Uh, this got a very early case of rust and it dropped its leaves uh, very quickly but it didn't turn out to be a big problem for me because uh, a, this is a terrible performer in my climate and usually sours because it has a big open eye. And it's also an earlier ripening fig, so it didn't do a whole lot of damage to me. However, if you're starting to see fig rust in July or August, then you might have a real problem on your hands. And the reason why you'll have a problem is the leaves on your trees are effectively the solar panels of those trees. They take in energy from the sun via photosynthesis and they provide the energy that the tree needs to ripen its figs. Sure, fertilizer plays a role, but at the end of the day, the most important thing for ripening figs is sun and uh, sunshine duration. So if you have your fig trees prematurely dropping their leaves, the fig trees will fail to absorb enough sunlight to get enough energy to ripen your figs. And you'll wind up with a fig tree full of figs that will never ripen. Or if they do happen to ripen a little bit, they're not going to taste very good because they will have very low sugar content because the tree will not have uh, nearly enough energy from the sun to properly ripen the figs and develop the sugars. So if you're getting very premature cases of rust in the middle of summer, now you need to do something about it. And there are basically two effective fungicides that will handle fig rust that I'm aware of that are also considered organic. And I have both of these linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description if you need a little bit of help finding them. The first thing is wettable sulfur. 
uh, sulfur powder when you mix it with water. You have to get the wettable kind. Um, it is an effective uh, remedy for fig rust or for rust on really any kind of fruit tree. The problem with sulfur is while it does work very well for fig rust and it's also an effective miticide, uh, the problem with it is it cannot ever be blended with anything oil-based. So if you use any kind of oil-based sprays on your trees, if you use pyrethrin, if you use horticultural oil, if you use neem oil, anything with an oil-based carrier, that oil-based carrier will react with the sulfur and it will burn up your trees. You'll, you'll burn up your leaves, you'll lose them all. So if you use sulfur because you have bad fig rust in your climate, you are basically committing to never using any kind of oil-based sprays on your trees. You can only use water-based. So while it is an effective fungicide and miticide and will help prevent rust, you have to weigh those options moving forward if you want to use wettable sulfur. Your other option as a fungicide is liquid copper. You can purchase liquid copper concentrate that is also certified for organic gardening. And when you use liquid copper, you can still use oil-based treatments throughout the season. So if you use any other oil-based sprays, you don't have to worry when you use copper. There isn't a reaction there. As they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If you start spraying once you already have fig rust, all it's going to do is slow down the infection. If you're in a climate with, uh, with bad cases of fig rust and you know that's the case where you live, you should start early and you should spray roughly on a rotating seven to 10 day schedule. You should start while the trees are young, probably in uh, May, maybe even early April, if you are in a, a really bad climate where it's prone to heat and humidity really fast, start early while the leaves still are pristine because they will do much better as a preventative spray than they will as a curative spray. Once you have rust, you are almost certainly not going to cure it. So I live in a very mild climate here. I live in zone eight on the immediate coast of North Carolina. I do not bring in my container fig trees for the winter. So in theory, they should start leafing out at about the same time as my in-ground trees, roughly. So I will take you through this orchard and you will notice that a lot of these trees are reaching end of life for the season. There is a lot of yellowing, as you can clearly see. Um, most of the trees, on this side anyway, do not have very many figs on them left. And you will notice an absolute litany of leaves all over the ground. And uh, they're dropping mainly because of fig rust. It's still very mild here. It's about 79 degrees in the day. We're, it's still close to 80. Our day lengths are still pretty decent. We still have sunlight until about 7 uh, before it gets really dark. So. Um, this is mainly fig rust that is defoliating my trees, and they look pretty beat. Um, you will also notice that I have some trees that I rooted much later in the season uh, that haven't uh, produced fruit for me yet because they're still so young. And you can see this tree is still kind of in its growth phase. It has green uh, rust-free leaves, but the bottom leaves are all really beat up on it. Uh, this one's just covered in rust. You'll see this fig even has rust on it, um, not looking too good. So um, clearly we're not gonna be able to ripen anything on this tree. And these larger trees, they're largely bare of leaves on the bottom. So they are really quite beat. Um, so not too much is going to happen with these container figs uh, for the rest of the season, even if I don't see frost for another month. Most of them are done, and I've harvested the majority of my crop from these trees anyway, so it's not that big of a loss. Uh, now that you've seen the condition that my container trees are in, I want to take you over to my in-ground fig trees and show you a difference. So here are my in-ground fig trees, and the very first fig tree that I'm going to show you is my Smith fig tree. And I'm showing you my Smith fig tree first because this is one of my earlier fig trees. This tree is largely picked clean. There are pretty much no figs left on this entire tree, and I ran out of this fig like a month or two ago. There's a couple up top, but there's no chance that they're going to ripen. The main crop of this fig tree have been harvested. 
And the reason why I want to harp on that is some of you may be thinking, well, your in-ground fig trees just look better because the container fig trees, they bloomed first, so they're ahead of the in-ground fig trees in their life cycle. Therefore, since the in-ground fig trees, uh, since they bloomed after the container fig trees, the rust hasn't hit them yet. And I don't think that's the case because I have numerous container fig trees that still have a large crop of figs on them that have been hit by rust really badly. Like my Coldadam Jagantina, this container fig tree still has a lot of figs on it, but it's lost all of its lower leaves and its mid-span leaves here are in, in pretty bad shape. Same thing with my container Black Madeira. It still has the overwhelming majority of figs on it. It's only just started to start ripening, but as you can see, the whole lower half of this container tree has lost its leaves, and uh, it's getting pretty gnarly rust on all of its other leaves. And this Violette de Bordeaux that has really struggled for me this year and hasn't ripened a single one of its figs le uh, yet, uh, they still have this still has tons of figs all over it. Again, hasn't ripened one, but all of the leaves are covered in rust and they are all getting brown and crunchy. So despite all of those container fig trees still having quite a bit of figs on them and still showing bad signs of rust, this Smith fig tree uh, is still really green. It's looking great. There are some light signs of rust in there, but overwhelmingly so, the leaves are healthy and green, and it looks like that this fig tree could keep growing for several months if my climate allowed it to. Then we go over to my Col de Dame Noir. Once again, there is some signs of rust uh, pretty down low, but overwhelmingly so, uh, the fig tree has really nice green leaves uh, that only have very light cases of rust on it. Uh, same thing with the Col de Dame Blanc. I have been harvesting this fig uh, like crazy. It's been one of my best figs this year. As you can see, it's been mostly picked clean until we get pretty high up top. And again, the leaves overwhelmingly look great on this tree. There is some rust, but not a whole lot. Ditto with the Italian 258. There's some rust that's just starting at the bottom. And I've been picking figs off of, the, uh, off of this tree, but overwhelmingly so, the, th the leaves are still bright, gr are still dark green and healthy, and it's even still putting on new growth where most of my container figs are failing at this time of year. And it's the same story on and on. Here's my uh, Borgeso Blanca Negra. The tree has been pretty much completely harvested. There's no figs left on it, but despite having no fruit, it only has the earliest initial showings of rust and my Martinica Ramada, which is probably the latest fig I own, is still loaded up with figs that have yet to swell, but only showing the earliest stages of rust. So it's clearly not a life cycle thing with rust. It is more of an environmental condition. So why are my in-ground fig trees overwhelmingly outperforming my container fig trees when it comes to fig rust? While I can't quite prove what I'm thinking, I do think I have a pretty good theory as to why. And the reason why I think my in-ground fig trees are vastly outperforming my container fig trees is due to moisture regulation. Uh, we get a lot of rain here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. We've had something like 45 to 50 inches of rain since June 1st. So we get a lot of wetness here. And I have a thick layer of compost and mulch, about four inches of compost and two inches of mulch on all of my trees. So they get uh, a very even level of moisture. Uh, because the earth, for all intents and purposes, continues forever, and the feeder root system of a fig tree is so advanced, uh, when you're in a climate like mine that gets so much rain, and the, the fig trees have so uh, such a large advanced root system, they're always able to easily find uh, uh, water. And because I don't have to water my fig trees, uh, the soil always maintains a similar level of moisture because we don't, we don't really get drought here. Uh, contrast that to my container fig trees that have to be watered every single day, sometimes twice a day in the heat of the summer in uh, June, July, and August. So when you're growing in containers, you have a rapidly changing moisture environment. You go from the container being almost bone dry in the midday 
and then you have to run out quick and water it. And then once you water it, it becomes completely saturated. And uh, because the entire root mass of the fig tree is balled up in this little ball, it's not able to search uh, for water. Uh, the earth never completely dries out, but containers do. And because of that rapidly changing moisture environment, I think that wreaks havoc on the water cycle of the fig tree and it completely exacerbates diseases. I can't say it does cause fig rust, but I have noticed that some of my fig trees, if they get overwatered, um, if they're a little bit stunted and uh, they don't and I water them as much as the larger trees, they will start to get some yellowing on the leaves. And I think that the overwatering uh, paired with the dryness, uh, when they get too dry, that stress just really weakens the tree, it weakens the leaves, and it makes them much more susceptible to rust. Periods of overwatering, periods of drought where the containers get too dry causes tremendous amounts of stress on the tree, it weakens the leaves, and those leaves probably become more susceptible uh, to diseases. Whereas these fig trees that don't have an issue with the water cycle, the leaves remain strong. The natural defenses of the tree remain high because they don't have to go through that water cycle stress that my container trees undergo. So what can we do to help combat that issue? Well, well, number one, if you live in a climate where fig rust is either not an issue or the onset of fig rust coincides with the end of your growing season, you can disregard this video. You don't have to worry about this. It's not a big deal. If you're in a climate where fig rust hits you very early, uh, or you live in a place with a very long growing season, so any amount of rust is too much, well, then I suggest that you A, uh, spray either with the liquid copper or the wettable sulfur like we discussed earlier in the video and you come up with a routine to help stave off some of that rust but most of all you need to control your water cycle so the best way I think that you can avoid fig rust is to plant your fig trees in ground and mulch them heavily give them heavy amounts of compost because all that organic matter in the soil will promote an even level of moisture and that even level of moisture and that moisture retention from all the organic material will, uh, will keep water stress away from your fig trees. If you cannot plant your fig trees in ground and you have to grow in containers, then number one, make the container as large as possible because a larger container will be easier to regulate the moisture content than a smaller container. Uh, in between waterings, there will be less flux. It, will go, it, it won't get as dry and when you uh, go to water it, there won't be as big of a variation between immediately when you water it and its driest point in the day. Uh, another thing I think you can do is you can set up, um, you can, sorry, I'm really getting attacked by mosquitoes here. Uh, another thing you can do is, there goes Dale. Another thing you can do is you can set up drip irrigation. And um, maybe the best course of action would be not to water once a day. Maybe it would be best to water in the morning and at night, um, only smaller amounts. Water more frequently to maintain an even level of moisture. But that will be up to you to decide. You have to figure out what is the best method of keeping your soil evenly moist. And of course, add a heavy layer of uh, natural hardwood mulch or pine bark nuggets uh, to your container. Uh, the mulch layer will help them uh, will help them from drying out, and uh, they won't. Um, the top layer of the, of the potting medium will not get baked by the sun. So everything you can do, anything you can do to maintain that soil moisture is key in keeping your tree as stress-free as possible so they can fight off rust for as long as possible. So those right there are my thoughts and my experiences with fig rust and what I think you can do about it if you are in a climate where fig rust is a big issue. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products I discussed in this video, or if you're curious about any of the products I use in my garden in general, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. If you start your Amazon shopping with our storefront links, even if you don't buy anything from our storefront, we get a little piece of the pie, so it helps us keep making these videos, and we really appreciate any you can do to help us. Thank you all again so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.